This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Do you drive a vehicle? Then you'll find AutoCorrect helpful, especially on Coach Charlie's Tip of the Week. Listen to our podcast with me, Coach Charlie Melton, on any podcasting platform or on the MPB Public Media app. Hello, thanks for tuning in to Everyday Tech. This is Abram Nanny with Sabir abdul Haq, an IT expert. This week is Mississippi Public Broadcasting's Education Week. So seeing as how I myself am not an educator, I invited on some people who are familiar with education in the science and technology field. Today, we'll welcome MPB's, MPB's own Jake Califer to the show to tell us about STEAM education in today's schools. And later, we'll have some guests from the Beam Pathon to tell us about the Python coding class they're hosting in the coming month. And of course, you can always email everydaytech at mpbonline.org if you have any questions or comments. Now, Sabir, how are you doing, man? How are you, how, how are you oh, coming man. into us from the show today? Oh, calling in the day, definitely calling in the day. It's been a been an action packed morning getting stuff taken care of. Doing a lot of stuff on the community and uh just really just staying out and staying busy. Staying oh, you said it, Sabir. You said you're staying busy. That's not that's that's against your rules. I did say it. I did say it. Oh my god, <laughs> let me back my hand. Well, at least I didn't say should. At least I didn't say that's should. That's true. That's true. <laughs> If I said should or if I decided to go ahead and buy something with a seller on in it, you know that I'm not the real severe. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Glad to be here, though. Glad to be here. Glad to be dialed in. Yeah, cool. So like I said from the beginning, we've got uh, our education week going. Um, and we have Jake here with us, Jake Califer from I MPB's. I think it's Keelhofer. Cal- oh, no. Califer is correct. He's, what? He's corrected me already. Jake. <laughs> it's It looks like Kielhofer. It does look like Kielhofer. In fact, most of the time I'll respond to that anyway. I'm right. just so used to it. Okay. But it is Califer, yeah. He's great. I still like him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we do have Jake Califer on the show. You were so. right, Abram. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, you are the STEAM specialist in MPB's education, right? So what, what do you do as the STEAM specialist? Sure. So let's just talk about what STEAM is, first of all. So a lot of people are familiar with STEM. STEAM is very similar. We just added an extra letter in there. So STEAM is science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And what I really specialize in is taking all of those things and kind of making a cohesive learning experience. So right now we're working on a lot of educational programming downstairs, making videos and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I try to incorporate all of those disciplines into a lesson. Yeah. So as education part, you get to do your stuff with television at MPB and you get to come on the radio. That's right. TV radio. Yeah. Living the dream. Exactly. Uh, so how what did you do before becoming on as a uh, as a steam specialist here at MPB? Sure. Yeah. So I taught at Germantown High School for about a decade there. I taught a lot of the different sciences. Uh, I taught human A&P, earth and space science, biology. And so I have a my background is in education. And so when I saw this position open up, I was really interested in that and kind of taking my passion for education statewide mm-hmm. instead of just localizing it to a school, kind of pushing it out to all Mississippi. Um, so I'm really passionate about that. Yeah, which I, I it took me a while to learn this, but Germantown School is actually in Gluckstadt. That right? is correct. Yeah, I, there's a Germantown up north further in North Mississippi, so I was confused when I, <laughs> when I learned that. And a lot of times when I say Germantown High School, they'll think of there's a really big Germantown High School in Tennessee, but it yeah. is right there in Gluckstadt. Yeah, it's been open for about 12 years now, I think. So right. it's still, as far as high schools go, kind of newer. Okay. Yes, yeah, uh, definitely new for a high school. Uh, so, Sabir, have you, you have much experience teaching or as far as like interning and stuff with people? So, yeah, we generally, um, there's several times that, and, and I was laughing when, when you said the Germantown. I actually had a friend of mine that used to teach in Germantown, like at the, in the one in Tennessee, so I was laughing oh, at cool. that. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, I have done everything from website training to basic IT training, like how to build a website, how uh, website design works, all those different things. Uh, we've done all those different things uh, for folks with my company and with uh, nonprofits from where, where I originally came from. So uh, shout out to you, Jake, man. Look, tip my hat to you because I definitely understand it. It is greatly fulfilling and it can be challenging, but it sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds like you're doing great work. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, I feel like you'd really anyone would be so surprised to see what kind of stuff is going on in high schools nowadays, especially in STEAM. I mean, we're doing it's just nothing like it was 20 years ago when I was in high school. You know, Uh, we've got kids flying uh, on unmanned drones. We've got kids doing graphic design. So it's just really interesting to see uh, all those new technologies kind of coming out and how the high school's education is trying to stay on track with that. You know, they're not falling behind. Yeah. And I think I mentioned it before on the show, but uh, when I was in high school, it was STEM. Mm -hmm. It it changed. It was, it was ICT, then it was STEM, and now it's STEAM adding in the, the arts. That That's right, yeah. So a lot of people, when I say STEAM, uh, everyone knows what STEM is for the most part. So I have to tell them that I'm the STEAM specialist. That doesn't mean I'm just filled with hot air. You know, it's <laughs> like, so what they did is they did add that extra letter in there, the arts. And that's a really big part of STEAM because I feel like it's bringing in people that maybe would not identify as a STEM person, you know, you got arts in there and there's a lot of, you know, careers that art is very important to that career choice. I mean, I think of graphic design, architecture, game design, interior design. There's so many things where if you weren't bringing the arts into it, uh, you're, you're not really fulfilling that career the way it's supposed to be done. Right. So a lot of the more I it's going to I'm not meaning this to sound like other positions aren't creative but like a lot of the more creative uh artistic yeah industry abso- yeah absolutely right. i mean right yeah i mean you're absolutely right i mean even things like engineering i mean you're drawing up the blueprints mm-hmm. and stuff so it's like i feel like all, the arts were already there in stem we just weren't including it for some reason so now we're just kind of, we're bringing more people into the fold which i think is really important Um, people who might not identify as a STEM person, as soon as you get the arts in there, that's going to interest them a lot more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Definitely interesting when you say that about the arts part. And when you're talking about video game design, I just had this conversation with my son who has dibbled and dabbled with science, natural sciences and life sciences, engineering, math. And now he's starting to take to, he just started high school, he's starting to take to like visual arts. And so I'm looking at all these things put together. I said, you know what you could do right now? He was like, what? And I was like, I said, I think you could really have a, a passion for video game, like level design. Mm-hmm. And he was like, nah, ain't nobody going to pay me for that. Mm-hmm. I said, bro, do you have any <laughs> idea how much these people get paid? Do people get paid to do this kind of stuff? And we were talking about it one time we were leaving Walmart. Uh, and, uh, and, he, and he just sat there and thought about And I've never seen this look of like thoughtful, inqu- like just really inquisitive look just washed over him he just was really like chewing on it so you know shout out to this this new generation of brilliant lines man right yeah i mean there's so many industries that are affected or or affected and becoming steam industries now um like previously just art in general like drawing would have been you know pen to paper but a lot of it is done you know on a on a computer screen now so jake tell me how are mississippi schools integrating steam into their curricula yeah sure so uh mississippi schools uh, we're integrating steam through a couple of different avenues so interdisciplinary projects a lot of schools have a initiative called sometimes they call it one-to-one or one-to-many where like a lot of students are provided a some sort of tablet or laptop by the school district and so now classes that don't identify as a steam class so your english your history anything like that well you're probably doing work on the computer and so you're really incorporating technology into a class where when i was in high school i can just speaking from my personal experience that was not the norm you know everything was pen to paper um so now you know you're using technology in all your classes but as far as a more steam focused class uh there there are a couple things that i find really interesting so some schools have these things called 
uh, academy classes, and they're kind of like these schools within a school. At Germantown High School, we had the healthcare academy. So anyone who was interested in going into the healthcare field could join this academy, and now you're taking all of your classes, uh, your science and your math, but even history and English are all kind of geared towards getting you ready for a career in the healthcare field. So in your English classes, you're reading kind of scientific uh, articles, you know, that are related to the healthcare field. And they're coming out of these things with like certifications that actually mean something to those careers. Uh, Some other things, you know, schools, we've got labs with hands-on activities, and we're trying to blend that in with art as well. There's also some classes called Project Lead the Way, which is like, instead of a lecture and note-taking class, it's all investigation. Uh, and you're kind of learning through that way. So a couple mm-hmm. different avenues uh, that, that schools are taking to integrate STEAM into the curriculum. Yeah, and it's it's fu- it's really cool to me because, like, back in when I was in high school in the 2010s, like, this would have been a extracurricular thing to do these types of things. But this is part of, like, you can get credits for this. Oh, now. absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Now, we've been discussing STEAM education with MPB's own Jake Kellifer, and I guess my next question is, are there any unique or innovative STEAM programs or initiatives in Mississippi schools that you'd like to highlight? Sure. So I did kind of mention those model academy programs. So I, I would like to just go into a little bit more detail on that. At Germantown, we have the healthcare academy, but they are kind of spread throughout schools, especially in the Jackson metro area. That's what I'm more familiar with. But these academies kind of go into a lot of different disciplines. So uh, there's an engineering academy, there's a culinary academy. And the idea there is we, we want to get to the point where whatever your interests are in, you could go to that academy regardless of where your individual school is. Um, so especially that culinary academy, I believe that's Ridgeland High School. I find that one super interesting. That is something that when I was in high school, I, I think I would have found that so interesting. But that just wasn't mm-hmm. really an option now. They've got a full, very nice kitchen. I think it was provided to them by Viking. And so they're really learning that, like, you know, grade A culinary, how to work in a kitchen from, like, a very professional standpoint. Uh, that's something that they can take out of um, out of the school and, you know, have a have a career uh, path right. ready for them. So that's that's kind of full circle from like uh like home ec classes and stuff. I never, I ne- we didn't have those when I was in school. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, had, they had been almost entirely abandoned. But like you're talking about these academies and these are kind of like, we called them Votech classes, Votech school. So you would go and you learn how to weld or you'd learn how to engineer or work on a car at a Votech school. So that's kind of the similar thing, but with STEAM, it, it is similar. So uh, there are career and technical schools that focus on that kind of stuff. So I know there are, like you mentioned, automotive uh, and, and healthcare type situated, uh, you know, career and technical classes. That's also where I've seen the unmanned aerial drone flight uh, mm-hmm. type classes, which is super interesting. Like anyone who's watching sports nowadays, like the NFL and most of those uh, major sports companies have have moved to drones uh, to record and to film a lot of their games. So that's really interesting that they're being incorporated at, at that really, really high level. But you can also see it being used in, in a high school and people are getting training on that. Well, it's like a mixture of like engineering and also like film school at yeah, the ab- same time. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it really is that technology meeting the arts, you know, right. I mean, you really have to have that eye for detail and, and to get the right shot. Um, but then that's really not going to be any good if you can't get it with the drone. Um, right. So, yeah. That's cool. So what kinds of hands-on learning experiences are available for students in STEAM classes? Sure. So these STEAM classes, a a big part of their goal is to provide a lot of options for hands-on learning. The idea is that we want to take information in a class that might not seem super 
uh, relevant to the students, but to show them that depending on what career you choose, you could be using it every single day. So some hands-on things that I've seen, learning experiences in life sciences, I've seen students perform like a DNA extraction and then running it through a gel electrophoresis kit. This is what like <laughs> professional forensic scientists are using to solve criminal cases. I, I don't even know most of the words that you just said. <laughs> it, it's really interesting. I mean, you, you and I like saying the whole name because it does sound super complicated, but <laughs> I, I got my high school kids to do it. We could figure it out That's in the cool. afternoon really, really uh, easily. Some other things I've seen, uh, students will take on the role of like a genetic counselor and then practice the bedside manner on a, like helping these pretend patients manage their illness. So oh, I was wow. really impressed by this because I had maybe a 16 year old girl take on the role of my genetic counselor and like really led me through if I had this disorder, what I would be expecting, wow. how I could manage it and was really impressed with her professionalism, you know. And so they're really cultivating that at an early age because that's a big part. If you go into the medical field, you're going to need that bedside manner. Some other things I've seen is I uh, there's a math teacher at Germantown High School. Her name is uh, Dr. Chrissy, so I'll shout her out. She's got this really interesting math project. So you take slope intercept form, which mm -hmm. is like, you know, you're working with graphs and stuff, but she has this website or this program, and you can use all of these linear equations to make this really interesting kaleidoscope artwork. And oh, cool. So like to, on a graph? On a graph, exactly. Yeah. And so to me, that's so interesting because I am the STEAM specialist, but I, especially that level of math, the slope intercept form, I was not really interested in. I didn't really see the relevance of it, but I love put giving it an art twist on it and like you could even talk about artists like mc asher who had like a big math background and that's just another example of how you're kind of bringing in those kids who maybe wouldn't be interested in math now you're have this art aspect to it and it's really engaging uh just to mention a couple other things i've talked about the unmanned drones so i'll just mention that again real quick something else that i've seen is a student has taken the skills they learned in a graphic design class and then scaled it up to a full-time business so he's got this really? little side gig going on he makes these graphic designs for and posters for these different companies and even germantown itself so that's really interesting just to see how these kids are really taking it and running with it, you know, and then making it their own. And this uh, individual has turned it into a business. So, Yeah, for sure. And I mean, Sabir, you talk all the time about like telehealth and telemedicine and stuff. And uh, what is your what is your take on these steam classes at Germantown and oh. other classes that are helping with, you know, health and medicine and stuff and right. also be involved in, in your industry in IT? Right. Well, I mean, so a lot of this stuff, and it's very interesting, Drake, Jake, what you were saying about um, about how the way how that, that made, made that kaleidoscope and everything was based on math. Before I start jumping into that other side of it, um, I want to say, like, a lot of things, like, for example, Photoshop, which has become, like, a must-have tool for anybody in graphic design, Photoshop is built on an algorithm that Adobe created. So, like, all these different things, it's all based on math. Mm -hmm. And so even though it's, yeah, clearly art and clearly graphic design, a lot of that stuff is based on math. Everything, like, when you first start up Adobe, as it's warming up, it tells you this is based on the such-and-such such algorithm brought to you by these by these folks. And <laughs> it's got a list of folks, so those folks are somewhere being rich. So it's great to see STEAM. Well, it started off with STEM, but now it's STEAM, of course. Like 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 y'all mentioned earlier, Steam is you know definitely taking off, and not only is the creativity just so amazing, but the innovation and and everything that you could be able to use with these different arts is is, is astounding. I would say we've talked about it before in past uh, episodes, Abram, in terms of telehealth and everything, the way how COVID kind of just changed the way how everything was going to operate. Uh, telehealth has been really impactful and important for, you know, for medical providers to be able to continue to be able to take care of and treat uh, illnesses and, and be able to have prognosis. But uh, as awesome as it is, I mean, it's 
it's it's constantly growing. It's constantly growing. I, I don't see any new per se innovation in terms of like telehealth and telemedicine, not just yet, but I've seen other folks like even in the in the Metro Jackson area that have used math and science, mm-hmm. for example, there's a certain person. I'm gonna let that person if you, if you look him up, he, this person has his own uh, uh technique that he has for for conception, like to make sure that, that folks that are that couples that are having really tough time to be able to, you know, try to consider, for example, he, you know, he came up with a, uh, a technique that really is truly unique and has greatly, I mean, significantly improved couples' ability to be able to conceive. So it's been fantastic. So this all comes from STEM, well, STEAM, I keep saying STEM, I keep leaving that <laughs> But uh, <laughs> this all comes from, you know, STEAM education. And I know that guy personally. He's, he's amazing. He's a great, you know, I'm not trying to I was putting things up, but if you were to look up a certain fertility doctor in the Madison County area, you'll know who I'm talking about. And and, and his his uh, his his uh, technique and his innovation is world class and and very well known. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's amazing what we've been able to learn from math and algorithms and stuff and the things we the ways we can apply that so we got a little bit of time left with you jake before i had to i gotta let you go that so. actually i wanted to uh comment on that doctor that's positive steps fertility i think okay but yeah 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 good doctor that's, correct. that's that, good that's doctor correct. I, I wasn't gonna put him out but yeah that's that's, that's my that's my good buddy that's, that's dr john perry he's mm-hmm. good too. Mm-hmm. I, I've cool. met that man. I've, I've met him a few yeah. times. All right. <laughs> yeah, he's good people. He's good people. <laughs> he's good people. So, so yeah. Jake, a final question for you. So, what advice would you give to parents and grandparents? Because we do have a lot of parents and grandparents that listen, and you know, you never know whose child would be interested in STEAM or a STEAM career. So, what advice would you give them, or what resources are available to them? Sure. So, one thing I would say, going back to something Sabir mentioned earlier, it's like the kids will almost let you know what they're interested in. So, you want to encourage that curiosity and exploration. So, whether they're interested in video games or photography, you know, they could take that and scale it up and make mm-hmm. a career out of it. So, you know, you want to you want to encourage their hobbies. Uh, Some other things you could do, there are a lot of, you know, uh, you could visit science museums, participate in community STEAM events. There's a lot of online resources, so that might be a good place to get started. There's educational websites and apps. A couple of YouTube channels I wanted to uh, mention. First of all, for PBS, we've got the Crash Course series. Mm -hmm. They kind of cover everything uh, STEAM-related, but they also go into the humanities and and everything. So they are very, very interesting. Another guy I like a lot is uh, his name is Mark Rober. He was a former NASA engineer. He, like, helped get the Mars rover on Mars. Incredibly intelligent guy. Yeah, super. Super smart, and he's super, super funny. So mm-hmm. he had a couple of videos that have gone viral. It's like he took, he kept having people steal his Amazon packages. So he oh, made Mark this. Mark Rober, yes, yeah. Yes, this guy's yeah. awesome. He made, glitter, uh, he made a glitter, he made a glitter booby trap and like recorded yeah. it. So y'all might have seen that online. But yeah, he's he's a cool guy because he'll take his engineering and science background and make these very creative projects out of them, and they're fun and. Uh, that that's a way to engage a kid and show them that you know science and technology and engineering it's not hard work all the time you can use mm-hmm. it and, and do fun things with it yeah absolutely well jake i appreciate you joining us for this first half of the show you've been uh super informative i hope uh, i hope our listeners uh were able to all catch all that so thank you very much for joining We're glad you found our show, Everyday Tech, on MPB Think Radio. This is Abram Nanny, still here with Sabir Abdul-Haq, who is ready to answer your questions. Email us at everydaytech at mpbonline.org. Now, while we're working on getting our guests pulled up in the show, I got to ask you, Sabir, how much much coding experience do you have? So my coding experience is limited really to, like, website design. Uh, I did my first website when I was 19 years old. I am much older than 19 right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, that was 25 years ago. You don't look I a day over it, Sabir. Uh, was that? I said you don't look a day over it. 
Man, look, I, and well, my my coworkers would give me a hard time because all the gray hairs I got. They'd be like, "Look, uh, you, you gonna die that or anything?" I'm like, "Why?" I'm like, well, my wife is fine with it, so I'm good. <laughs> but uh, but uh, all of my coding experience has just been really like with HTML. Uh, and then of course you got well, you had C sharp, uh, CSS. Uh, so anything if it didn't have to do with like web design, I really didn't have a lot of experience with it. But um. That's pretty much it for me in terms of coding. I am learning, and I did do a little JavaScript, uh, making like small flash movies and videos and things like that. I am working on app design, though. I'm working on app design, uh, which is definitely a little daunting, but I'm learning it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to be doing doing apps soon. Very cool, very cool. All yeah. right, well, we have our guests from the Bean Path on with us. We have Tamika and Ricky. Tamika and Ricky, how are you guys both doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Ricky, how are you? Hey, guys. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great. Well, for the fir th first of all, thanks to the both of you for coming on the show. So can you each tell me what you guys do with the Bean Path, starting with Tamika? Yes, so I am the um, interim executive director for the Bean Path, and um, our mission as a nonprofit is to bridge the digital gap, and we do that by offering free classes like this. Very cool. So, Ricky, what about you? What is your what is your role in this? So, I, I, I volunteered with the Bean Path to help teach this this class to offer it to the community um, on Python and, um, and and grow the coding skills with inside the Jackson community. Very cool. So we've mentioned Python a little bit already. We talked about coding. So, Ricky, what what is Python coding, and what can you do with Python coding? So Python is a is is, is as you've said a programming language, and it there's a lot you can do with it. Um, my, my background is in data analytics and a little bit of AI with it. Um, so so you can do AI, um, quick and dirty app development with like frameworks such as Django or Flask. So that it's it's a easy to learn tool with a lot of flexibility and versatility. Right. So what what type of thing have you worked on before? You said you've got a background with AI? Yeah, so I've actually used Python um, and AI um, to do a little bit of um, it was it was a deduplication for insurance records. Um, so basically if someone's name what had in in data, like their name had a uppercase first letter and then a then the, the second record had a lowercase first letter, we were able to kind of match those two together and deduplicate records. Um, and, and, and then there was also addresses too, that was another big one. So for instance, one address could say street and the other address could say like ST period. So we had mm -hmm. to do some matching on that. Um, and we used a, 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 a tool um, to, 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 to use AI and, and train the model to, um, to, to notice some of those differences and deduplicate the records. Okay, that's really cool. So you're you're teaching the AI as it's analyzing all this data. So, yeah. So it was, yeah, it was a supervised learning model, and so we kind of gave it some rules to follow, and and it uh, I think it was like 25 records that we taught it on, and then it, it completed the other 20,000 records, um, de de duplicated them. Very cool. And so if you go to this class, you could probably learn how to do some of that stuff. So this this class that you guys are hosting is a free six week course, correct? Correct. Yes. So, why is the Bean Path doing this? Is this is uh, is there so much to gain from it? Are you guys just just a good organization? We're just a good organization. <laughs> this falls within our mission. Um, we know that coding is becoming more and more prominent. Um, they're teaching coding um, in the K through twelve system. It's you know, of course, being taught across college campuses across the U.S. And we want to have um, our students better prepared for the work for the future workforce. And also, if parents want or adults want to upskill, this is a great time for you know you to kind of dip your toe in the coding world and just kind of learn what the basics are via Python. Right. So, it is that is the Python a good place to start? Would did you need to have had any previous experience with coding, or is Python a good? Is this six week course a, a good place to begin? No, this 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 six week course is a great place to begin. We're gonna start from the very basics and work our way up, um, and then by the end of it, um, each class we're gonna kind of build a program that you can take and build off of and um, and use that kind of in your your portfolio. Okay, so is it gonna be like you show up 
for week one and you're working on this one project and then week two you're building on that project with another project or is it going to be something like you're learning a different thing every time you show up um it's it's it, we're going to start from the basics um and then yeah it's, yeah you're going to kind of build on the previous lesson um and then start with yeah building just learning the basics of python kind of how to navigate the ide a little bit um and then each yeah each lesson is going to grow on the next very cool that's really interesting so if i wanted to find out more about this class like just the base level like what you guys are going to be teaching where where could i find information about that tamika yes you can go to our website um the beanpath.org you can go to the coding link and there will be a rsvp for the sign up and we do encourage people to come to the whole six weeks um i don't know exactly how the program will be but we do we don't want you to you know miss any of that important information Right. So is this like the first time you guys are doing this coding class? It is. Yes. Very cool. So, so a brand new program. If get, yeah. If we get some more interest, maybe we'll do a level two and we'll see how far this goes. Okay. So is this class for every, like, is this a student only class? Like if you're going in high school or college, or if you're go if you're going to be an engineering student, is those are the people that can come or is this for, you know, our viewer who's listening and has not had any experience with coding or anything in the past, like some like some older individuals who also would like to join the class. So, yeah, I, we, we have from eight and up. So we're eight, ages eight and up. So, uh, yeah, you can start all the way from the beginning in school to if you're in the workforce and you're looking to gain some new skills that can help bolster your resume. Eight and up. Eight is where you can start. Am I, I, I'm correct on that, right, Tamika? Yes, absolutely. So if you're a youngster and you want to know more about computers and coding, we encourage you to come on now. Now bring your parent, too. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, eight and no. Actually, I have a child that I'll be bringing. So he's a right. um, fifth grader. Mm -hmm. I sure wish I had this when I was younger because, like, I mean, I, I, I wanted to learn about coding, uh, and, and like I was, I was telling Abram just for y'all got on HTML and like CSS was about all the coding that I ever did, and I've got a good friend of mine uh, over in, uh, in California, and he'll hit me up and he's asking me questions. He'll be like, "Yeah, can you tell me about this uh, Ruby on Rails and such and such and such about Python? And these are, these Ruby on Ruby is, is is another coding language, uh, Abram." Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, "Bro, hold on, time." Time out, stop. I, I don't know anything. <laughs> so, so I wish I had this kind of information growing up. And, and, and shout out you know, for what you're doing to today's kids. If if my big headed, curious, you know, somewhat techie tail when I was like 16, 17, 18 years old was interested in this, I know today's youth will really appreciate what y'all are doing for the community. So shout out to y'all. Shout out to being there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I remember as a kid, I wanted to go to computer camp or robotics right. camp or something as a kid, but it was just something like, it was not an option. Like, well, it was an option. It was there, but I couldn't, my parents could not afford to, to spend that money or take the time and organize this. Um, so you guys at the beam path are offering this entirely free, correct? That is correct. That's yeah, awesome. Free, free encourage. And so Rick, you are a volunteer with this, correct? That's correct. Yes. So how can other individuals, how did you get involved with the beam path to volunteer in the first place? And how can others also do that? So I learned about the beam path uh, through AI month, which was in, in May, I believe. Um, and it, uh, I, I reached out to them and I was like, Hey, I think th this is something that can benefit the community and something I, I would like to do to give back to the community. So um, they're, they're extremely open and looking for volunteers all the time to help uh, teach and enable the community. Very cool. So you learned during AI month, which is something that we've had a previous show on uh, in the w when you guys were preparing to do AI month. We we talked about AI month on the show. So that's that's really cool. Um, so, Tamika, how how are people how much can you guys use volunteers? Like, are you guys going to run out of spots for volunteers or? Yeah, no, not anytime soon. <laughs> so if anybody wants to volunteer, please feel free to um, email me at Tamika, T-A-M-I-K-A, at thebeampath.org. 
and we will be more than happy to fit you in somewhere. There's so much to do here um, at our makerspace. Um, more classes with AI and coding. We have robotics, drone flying. So yes, please come by and help us out. Right. And the volunteers are not going to be babysitting under eight year olds the whole time. <laughs> I wouldn't say babysitting. They're, they're going to be having <laughs> fun with you. Having fun. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. But Sabir, I believe you had some questions yourself, didn't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, um, we talked about a lot of different tech careers and different ways that technology gets, you know, the applications of. So what are some things that, I know we've talked about uh, the different things that Python and, you know, and, and, and coding, what, can you give us some examples of what Python could do and be applied for in today's society? Yeah, for sure. So um, you can, Python can be used for a lot of different things. Um, so you can uh, do data analytics with it. Um, you can do data visualization. Um, you can quickly bootstrap together startup applications. So there are a, a lot of different things that you can do with Python um, and a lot of different tools. And it's, and it's a great starting point for any anyone starting their coding journey as well or um, le looking to le learn a new language. So when you're yeah. starting with Python, is that is that a beginning point and then you pick up another language at this at, at a later point in your life? Or is that like, can you roll with Python with what you learned with Python for a long time? Yeah, so you, I mean, Python can be a full journey, and there's there's specific engineers dedicated to software engineers dedicated to, to just Python and libraries within Python. Um, so you, you can basically an individual that knows Python can kind of choose their own route. They can go down web development, they can go down data analytics, they can go down AI, um, they can go down process automation, they can do web scraping. So there's a lot of different functionality that you can't do with it. Um, and, and then once you once you learn Python, you can kind of take some of those skills about object-oriented programming and apply them to other languages once you, and, and, and then you're kind of just learning the syntax of that other language, not just, um, so you'll have the, the kind of the back-end understanding of how programming languages work, and then you can learn another language and if, if that's another path you want to go down as well. Gotcha. Yeah, when, and I know I've been seeing a lot of these different things. Um, like, I'm, I'm an Android guy. We, we have our, our beef on the show in terms of iPhone and Android wars and everything. Uh, and so, they, you know, a lot of people I know in open sourcing it using, like, Raspberry Pi and all these different things. What, what are some of the things that would differentiate the course, the six-week course that BeanPath is doing, would differentiate it from some of the things that you may see on, like, Facebook, those Facebook ads that say, hey, you could buy this and do this. Y'all are offering a free course, you know, for, for today's youth, for Metro Jackson youth. What are some things, have you ever seen those, you know what I'm talking about, Jake? Uh, not Jake, I'm sorry, you know what I'm talking <laughs> about and see, um, seeing those things and, and how does y'all course, how does your class differentiate from some of the other classes and even some of those little quick little ads trying to get people to buy stuff? How does your course differentiate from those? So, so we're, it's 100% free and, and we'll cover some of those topics that are even covered in those courses. Um, usually mm. those are some sort of like uh, dev development boot camp or something like that. Um, of course, yeah. we're not going to go in depth as some of those development boot camps, but we'll, we'll, we'll get you down the path and give you some other resources you continue and then continue with some future programs um, to further enable kind of what those development boot camps are designed to do. Gotcha. gotcha. Has there been, uh, like, is, is there particular ages, like in, in certain age groups that, you know, folks have, have been showing for some of your other work that you've been volunteering for, are there particular age groups that people, like maybe 15 to 17-year-olds that are already doing gaming or a little bit of coding or have been curious that have latched onto it? Or has it been like younger folks who may have been watching a tutorial on YouTube and said, you know what, I want to do this? What, what are the age groups that seem, seem to have gravitated towards this type of work and everything or this, this type of, 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 uh, of industry? I'm going to let Tamika chime in on this one and kind of the, the, the demographic of what, what, what has signed up. I'm not quite sure on that. Yeah, we haven't got a chance to really look at our uh, demographics yet, but I can tell you that um, we were marketing this as like a two generational strategy for mm -hmm. parents and youth so that, you know, you didn't have to drop your kid off and then come to class and or, or uh, stuff like that. But that's a great question. And we hope to have those answers on starting off August 13th. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. So that's when the class starts, correct? Is August 13th. Yes. Okay, so where can people learn more about the Beam Path and what else you guys are doing? 
Um, our website, um, thebeanpath.org, has lots of great I information. On our website, we have our activities in three different buckets. So um, events, classes or workshops, and also clubs. Mm -hmm. So um, the clubs are the free um free classes this is what the coding classes is coming under the workshops are jewelry making ceramics laser cutting drone flying wood shop and i feel like i'm missing one but wow. we have several workshops that you did now now those do have a fee associated to them because we have expert instructors that teach those courses mm -hmm. and then we have our um, events so we will be celebrating our sixth anniversary this coming up October, starting October 21st. And we'll be having a separate page. It's, it's not up yet, but you can be on the lookout for um, our big anniversary celebration in October. Very cool. So this is a, a really cool opportunity for all those listening. And if uh, so, if, if someone like missed some of the show or did not catch, what is what is the final piece of like what is a final tidbit that you would tell them to try to convince them that this this coding project and getting with coding and sticking with coding is is going to uh, impact their life in such a great way? Ricky, how, how would you emphasize that to someone? So, I mean, there's various different things you can do with coding. So you can you can use it to get a job or you can use it to take your idea to market uh, by bootstrapping a startup or you can create your own web application and and, and sell that or you can even create a solution for a nonprofit. Um, so there's lots of different ways you can take it and um, lots of different opportunities with it. All right. And then that is going to pretty much wrap us up for the show. We're at the very end. Tamika, do you have a final thought? Thank you for coming on, but do you have a final thought real quick? Um, I just want to thank you guys and you guys can feel free to sign up for our classes and we'll welcome you here at our makerspace. Thank Absolutely. You. Well, thank you guys both for coming on. And thank you, Jake Califer, for coming on for the beginning of the show. That's going to wrap us up for the day. Thanks, Sabir, for helping myself and our callers out. If you missed any of the show, make sure you listen back to it on your favorite podcasting app or download the MPB Public Media app. Everyday Tech is brought to you by Mississippi Public Broadcasting Think Radio and generous contributions from listeners. Our show today was engineered by Jermaine Flood. Our call screener was Will Pickering. I've been your host, Abram Nanny, also the podcast producer. Thank you for tuning in. Up next is Dr. Jimmy Stewart with the original Southern Remedy, and we'll be back next Wednesday morning at 10, right here on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.